Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs and I go by that on Instagram and on Facebook. And you can always stay up to date with me by following me over there on Instagram, Facebook, or even in my Facebook group. Now in this video, we will go ahead and talk about that third top as part of the top series part two spring tops. Now in this one, we will be talking about the Empire line top. Utilizing Butterick 6732, I will be sewing along to view C, but you could do whatever view that you would like. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get it right into the new video. All right, everyone. So let's go ahead and talk about the supplies that you will need in order to construct your empire line top. So the first thing you will need is the pattern, which is Butterick 6732. I use rotary cutters. I use one for paper, one for fabric. I make, never mix the two. I use two pairs of scissors at the sewing machine, one for paper, one for fabric. I never mix the two there. I have my marking tool, so I have a disappearing ink, a chalk, because I am, uh, if just in case you're using like some um, striped fabric, you may need a chalk to mark your line so you do not uh, mix up the plaid or any gingham or anything of that sort or stripes a white uh, marker just in case you have a dark fabric and need to mark some X's or dots. I have a seam ripper just in case I make a mistake and need to rip out the seams. A point turner just in case I have some um, edges that I need to poke out to get a nice clean finish. You'll also need some pattern weights, some pens. You will need one yard of a half inch uh, elastic. And I also, you will need a 22 inch invisible zipper. Now that's all the items that you will need in order to construct your empire line top. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the pattern instructions as well as the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct your empire line top. So I'm pulling up the instructions for a reason. So this pattern has different cup sizes. So one thing that you want to do is look in this section right here where it says A, B, C, D cup sizes. So the first thing you want to do is measure around the fullest part of your bus and also make um, make note and measure around the upper part of your bus. So for me, my bus size is the 39 and a half and my upper bus is a 40 and a half. So when I do tops or anything that have to deal with something that you have to fit over your bus, I always use the upper bus measurement because it's bigger. And then I always account for two inches of ease. So anytime I make a top, I always go for 42 and a half to 43 inches to give me enough room for my upper bus as well as my bus. So in this case, my bus, so if I take my high bus minus my bus, it leaves a difference of one. So once I go down to the cup size chart right here, it tells me that for one inch, I'm an AB cup on this pattern. Now, whether you're a C cup, a D cup, or whatever have you in regular bra sizes, it does not make a difference when you're dealing with a pattern. So go by the pattern where it says cup size chart. So for me, I am an AB cup. So I will use pattern pieces one and two. Just make sure when it comes to the upper front and the upper back, you are using whatever your cup size is right here. So if you're a cup C, you will use pattern piece two and 13. If you are a cup D, you will use pattern piece three and 14. So just to give you a case of what's going on right there. So now if you look over here, I highlighted all the pieces you will need. I just wanna make note of pattern piece number six, which is your mid riff front. Your lower front, which is pattern piece number eight, those two you will need to face down with wrong sides up and cut. So I will also make a note when I show you the pattern pieces. So let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct your empire line top. So the first pattern piece you will need is pattern piece number 12. This is your upper front if you are an AB cup and you need to cut one on fold of fabric, just make sure that when you cut out your fabric, you are facing this piece down and you're going to cut around this piece. So this is pattern piece number 12. The next pattern piece you will need is pattern piece number four, which is your upper back. You're going to cut two. 
Next pattern piece is pattern piece number six, which is your midriff front. You will need to cut two on photo fabric and also interface one on the photo fabric. You need to place this piece down on the fold and make sure that the pattern piece is wrong sides up and then cut around. Next pattern piece you will need is pattern piece number seven, which is your midriff back. You will cut four of these and interface two. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 15, which is the sleeve. You will need to cut two of fabric. Pattern piece, next pattern piece is pattern piece number 11, which is your back neck facing. You will cut two of fabric and interface two. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 17. This is your front facing. You will cut one on fold of fabric and one on fold of interfacing and make sure that when you cut this piece out, you have the wrong side up and then you will cut around. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number eight. This is your lower front. You need to cut one on fold of fabric and make sure when you cut this pattern piece, you have this pattern piece with the wrong sides facing up and you will cut around the pattern piece. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number nine, which is your lower back. You need to cut to a fabric. And the last pattern piece that you will cut, you will not cut this out of fabric. This is your elastic guide. So you will be cutting two elastic for your uh, wrist. If you are doing the sleeve that I'm doing, you will need elastic for your wrist. So you will be cutting two pieces. And that's all the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct your empire line top. So let's go ahead and start sewing the top together. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with your empire line top. So the first pattern piece you need to grab is pattern piece number 12, which is your upper front, which was cut on the fold. So what you want to do is go ahead and make the darts in the front portion of your top. So I have done, I have shown you guys how to make darts many of times. So you're just gonna pin at that portion, make sure that the lines are matching up. So go ahead to the sewing machine and make your darts. And then you're going to press your darts towards the center. So you're going to press your darts towards the center. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so I so now I went ahead and uh, made my darts and I pressed them towards the center. So the next thing you want to do is go ahead and reinforce right here in between the lower edge. Once you reinforce pivoting where you need to, you're going to clip to your um, dot, but do not clip through the stitching. And it should look just like that. All right, so after you do that, go ahead and grab pattern piece number four. Now, I wanna make a correction. So my pattern piece is pattern piece number 12 for my upper front, but if you was a, a side C cup, you needed to cut pattern piece number 13 and a D cup as pattern piece number 14. So your, your um, upper front number may be different from mine, but the sewing is still the same, okay? So I just wanted to make sure I make a note of that. So go ahead and grab pattern piece number four, which is your upper back. Now with right sides together, you want to attach your front to the back at shoulders. So just make sure you are attaching it at shoulders. So this is the right side there, and then I'm gonna attach the other side there. And then pin at that notch that you have at your shoulders, and then you're going to pin all the way across your shoulders. Now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end and finish off your seams. You're gonna do both shoulder seams the exact same way. So go ahead and do that. So once you have sewn your um, shoulder seams together and finish off the shoulder seam, just make sure you go ahead and do the exact same thing to your side seams. You're going to pin at your notch there and pin across the sides of your um, gar your top. And then also using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end and finish off your seams. You can um, finish off with your um, serger like I will be doing and I will be um, 
sewing them together instead of sewing them open. Now, once you do the side seam and your shoulder seam, go ahead and search the back, the center back seam, which is this portion right here. And that's for your zipper. You wanna go ahead and um, finish it off because once you attach your zipper, you will not have a chance to finish it off. So go ahead and finish it off now before we attach the zipper later on in this tutorial. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so I went ahead and um, sewn my shoulder seams together and finished those off. I also went ahead and sewed my side seams together on both sides and finished those off as well. And then after I did that, I went ahead and searched the center back seam where my zipper is going to go. So I did all of that. So now that all of that is done for your bodice portion, you could go ahead and put your bodice portion aside and grab your sleeve, which is pattern piece number 15. Okay, so now that I have my sleeve, what you want to do is go ahead and sew with right sides together. You want to sew your underarm seams. So with, I'm gonna move one out the way. And with right sides together, I'm going to go ahead and sew my underarm seam. Now, if you want to press your seams open, go ahead and finish off your underarm seams now. But for me, I'm just going to uh, finish off my seams together instead of uh, serging them separately. So I'm gonna pin my underarm seam, I'm gonna pin at that notch, pin at the top, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pin at the bottom as well. And using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to backstitch at the beginning and at the end and finish off my seam allowance. I'm gonna do that to both of my sleeves. Once I finish both of my sleeves, my underarm seams of my sleeves, I'm gonna go ahead and form the casing. Okay, so now that I have went ahead and sewn my underarm seams and finished them off, now um, what you want to do is go ahead and prepare your sleeve for the casing. So what you want to do is what I did was create a basting stitch one inch from the edge. Now what I'm going to do is fold in a fourth of an inch. And then after I uh, fold in and press a fourth of an inch, I'm going to go ahead and stitch and press up to that one inch line. So basically I want to encase a fourth of an inch to that one inch line and then I'm going to sew as close to the edge as possible, leaving, me, leaving an opening to insert my elastic. So go ahead and do your casing and, your, and insert your elastic for your sleeves. Okay, so I wanna show you quickly on um, how I'm going to do my um, casing for my sleeve because I feel like this may be an area where you guys may get a little stuck on if you're not familiar with casings. So what I did is create a fourth of an inch basting stitch along the bottom, and then I created another one one inch from the uh, bottom. So what I'm going to do is press that one fourth of an inch in all the way around. Once I do that, I'm going to press it up again where that one inch line is. Press it all the way around. After I press both of those all the way around, I'm going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on my sewing machine. At, and that should get as close to the edge as possible. I'm going to leave about a good inch opening uh, to be able to sift my elastic all the way around. So leave about an inch opening right here um, by your underarm seam to sift the elastic through. And you're going to start about right here, stitch all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, and then back stitch at the end about right here, and then sift your elastic all the way through. I'll show you how I sift my elastic all the way through. Okay, so now that I went ahead and um, sewn together my casing, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my elastic guide for view C, where you need to cut two. Now, I'm only cutting one because I already did one of my sleeves already. 
So what I'm going to do is measure my elastic. So I cut the sides 16. So I'm going to measure to the 16. I'm sorry, I cut a size 18. So I'm going to measure the 18 across and make sure I cut uh, where the 18 is. And then I'm going to take my safety pin, stick that at the end of my elastic, close the safety pin, and then I'm going to go ahead and sift my safety pin and my elastic all the way through to the other end, making sure that you do not accidentally pull the elastic too hard to where it um, comes all the way out. So just sift your elastic all the way through to the other end. Now, now that I'm at the other end, I'm gonna pull the elastic a little bit, take off the safety pin for a second, and then I'm going, going to distribute the elastic all the way around. Now, once you do that, you want to try your sleeves on and see if you get a good fit. So go ahead and see if you get a good fit on your sleeve. So once you see if you got a good fit, you could go ahead and stitch your elastic uh, at the ends to close it out. So I'm going to just try my sleeve on on the right side quickly. Check and see what my fit is looking like. I like the fit. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and stitch, stitch my elastic together at the end to secure it and then close up that opening. Okay, so now I went ahead and closed out my elastic. I'm going to slide it inside of my sleeve and go ahead and close that opening up. So now that I am going to do that, I'm going to go ahead and attach my sleeves to my bodice. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach your sleeve to your bodice. Now, before you do that, go ahead and create two rows of gathering stitches. So the first, um, so basically using a basting stitch, what you want to do is create the first row of gathering stitches, five eighths of an inch, seam allowance, and then the second row you want to create at uh, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. You need to backstitch at the beginning, but do not backstitch at the end. Um, now grab your bodice and with right sides together, you want to attach your sleeve to your bodice. Now, one thing you want to do is go ahead and pin at your underarm seams. So this seam meets up with this seam, right sides together. Now, one thing I want to make note of is this is the back with the two notches. That is the back of your sleeve and the one notch is the front of your sleeve. So because I know this is the back portion of my bodice, that is the wrong sleeve hole, armhole. So I'm going to go to this side and with right sides together, I'm going to go ahead and pin at my underarm seam. Matching up that seam and then I'm going to pin at the double notches, which is the back of my sleeve. And then I'm going to also pin at the single notch in the front of my sleeve as well. Now you can put some pins um, along the bottom portion of your sleeve, your armhole. You could do that as well. And I'm going to go ahead and match up the notch at the front of my sleeve and then puts a couple of more pins at the bottom portion as well. The um, back portion of the, the two threads at the back portion of my sleeve, and I'm going to pull those two threads to ease in my sleeve. So basically find that second thread and then you want to pull do not pull very hard and you want to ease in your sleeve cap just like that 
So once you ease it in and it fits onto your armhole very good, go ahead and pin and using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning, so all the way around and backstitch at the end and then finish off your seams. Okay, so now that I have sewn my sleeves on and also finished off my armhole, go ahead and put your um, upper bodice portion aside and grab pattern piece number six and seven, which is your mid rough front and back. So the first thing you wanna do is on pattern piece number six, which is your mid rift front, you want to go ahead and reinforce that dot. So I'm gonna move pattern piece number seven out of the way. So if you turn it where it's making an upside down V, there is a dot right here. You want to go ahead and reinforce uh, this dot. You wanna do that on your interface portion as well as your uninterface portion. So go to the sewing machine and go ahead and do that first. Okay, so I went ahead and reinforced right here at this dot and then I clipped to the dot without going through my stitching. I did that for both the interface and the uninterface um, midriff. So I just wanna show you both of those. Now go ahead and grab pattern piece number seven, which is the back of your midriff. And with right sides together, you want to go ahead and attach uh, the front to the back at the sides. So I'm gonna grab both of the interface. I'm gonna move the ones that are not interface out of my way. And then you want to go ahead and pin at your side seam. And with right sides together, you're gonna pin and using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, go ahead and back stitch at the beginning and at the end and finish and press your seams open. Okay, so I went ahead and sewn the midriff back to the midriff front on the interface section as well as the uninterface section. Now I do wanna make note that the uninterface se section is called your facing piece. So the portion that is not interface, this is your facing piece. This is just your interface piece, okay? So now that we have done that, go ahead and grab your top portion. And we're going to go ahead and with right sides together, we're going to pin the midriff to the top. So just make sure that right side is facing up. And what you're going to do is pin at your side seams. Now you want to make sure that your midriff have that upside down looking V. So that's how you want to pin it. So I'm gonna start at my side seams and pin at my side seam. Get a couple of pins here. And then I'm going to pin at the very end And then I'm going to pin the other side seam as well. All right, now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna backstitch at the beginning and at the end. And um, once you finish doing that, you want to press your seams up towards the uh, facing. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so I went ahead and did and attached my midriff to the upper portion of my top. And I went ahead and trimmed it down. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, make sure that the interface portion is out of my way. And I just want this portion facing up. So make sure you move everything else out of the way. Now grab your facing piece, which is the uninterfaced midriff. All right. So now what you want to do is you're going to pin right side to wrong side of the bodice. 
So with right side to wrong side, you want to go ahead and pin. Now I'm going to start at my um, side seam and pin. I know normally you do right sides together, but on this one you will be pinning your right side of your facing to your wrong, the wrong side of your bodice. And then you're just going to do like you have done before and just pin all the way across the bottom portion of your midriff. Now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end and press your seams down towards the um, midriff. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that I have attached my facing onto my midriff and I went ahead and pressed the seam down towards the midriff and went ahead and pressed my facing down as well. You could go ahead and put your top aside for just a moment. And then you want to go ahead and grab the lower front and lower back. Now, one thing you wanna do on pattern piece number eight, which is your lower front, there, there are um, two dots right here. So I'm hoping you could see these two dots. So you want to gather between these two dots. Now I just made little X's because I have a darker fabric, but just make sure that you uh, make gathering stitches between those two dots and then you're going to gather. Now I made my first stitch at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then the second one at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull up the um, gathers right here, just a little bit, not a lot. And just take it in just a little bit. And you may have to let some out or pull some in. That's completely up to you. Now go ahead and grab pattern piece number nine, which is your lower back. And with right sides together, you're going to pin the sides seams. And go ahead and pin the sides, matching up your notches as well. And make sure that when you are pinning that you have a notch on the side, so make sure that your notches are matching up. And then pin. So you're gonna pin both sides side seams and using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance you're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end after you have pinned your side seams and do that to both sides so finish i'm just going to go ahead and finish pinning and then i'm going to use 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance back stitch at the beginning and at the end and then finish off my seam allowance on both sides go ahead and do that Okay, so now that I have attached my lower back to my lower front um, with the right sides together, I went ahead and finished off my side seams as well. I went ahead and gathered that section right here. And then after I did that, I stay stitched along the upper edge um starting at the back and then i stop at the dot i did that on both sides so now that i have done all of that go ahead and grab your top portion and with right sides together you're going to pin your lower front and back to your midriff so just make sure with right sides together you are pinning now i'm going to start pinning at my notch my side seam i'm sorry my side seam now make sure you uh have your facing out of the way so you do not catch that so make sure you are pinning at your side seams so i'm going to start at my side seam and i'm going to pin all the way across my midriff
All right, so after you pin, you wanna make sure that you do not have the facing caught into any of your pinning. So you're gonna to go to the sewing machine and using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna backstitch at the beginning and backstitch at the end. Trim your seams and then press your seams down towards the midriff. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that I have attached the lower front and back, the lower sec section, to my midriff, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and trim the seam allowance down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim it down. So now that you have trim trimmed your seam allowance down, what you need to do is go ahead and press the seam allowance up towards your midriff. And then you're going to take this press edge and make sure that it's over it. Now you have two options. You can either slip stitch using a hand needle, or you could do what I'm going to do and pin on the right side and stitch in that ditch. So go ahead and press your seams up towards the midriff. So you're just gonna press your seams up Take the folded edge of your midriff facing. Make sure that that edge is a little past that stitching. And then you're going to pin on the right side and then stitch in the ditch. So go ahead and do that. All right, so now that I have my midriff done, so what I did was went ahead and pressed it down and then I um, sewn as close to the bottom edge as possible. And then I went ahead and top stitched around my entire midrib. So the next thing you want to do is with right sides together, you want to go ahead and pin so you could install your zipper. Now, before you install your zipper, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and finish off your center back seams. Now, my center back seams is finished all the way up the top portion, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the bottom portion of my um, center back seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'll uh, prepare my center back for the zipper installation. Okay, so now that I have went ahead and finished off my center back seam, so what I'm going to do now, you should have a dot right here at the very end where you're going to stop for your zipper. So you're going to go ahead and pin the center back seam. Now make sure you are matching up your midriff section because you do not want them to be basically um, one higher than the other. So make sure you are pinning and that they are even. <laughs> So pin there, and then you want to go ahead and pin at your dot. So go ahead and pin at your dot right here. I'm hoping you could see it on camera. So go ahead and pin at that dot. And then I'm going to go ahead and pin at the very bottom. And then finish pinning along the entire center back. Okay, so now that you have it pinned, I'm going to start at the very bottom. So I'm just gonna turn it around. And I'm going to start at the very bottom where my dot, where at the very bottom at the hem. So I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning at the hem and then come all the way up to my dot. So using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and then when I get to my dot, I'm going to back stitch there and then switch to a basting stitch. And then I'm gonna base from the dot all the way up to the very top of my top. And then I'm gonna press my seams open. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that I have went ahead and sewn my center back seam, pressed it open, and then I went ahead and stabilized my zipper area by adding um, interfacing to just the seam allowance of the zipper area. So now what I'm going to do is take my invisible zipper 
and with the right side facing down, I'm going to go ahead and pin. Now I use longer zippers, so my zipper pull is out of the way, but you do not have to, you just need a 22 inch invisible zipper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin on the seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and pin my zipper in place just pinning on the seam allowance, just on this portion, not on my top. And make sure that the, the zipper is in the center of the seam line. All right, now after you have pinned the one side to the seam allowance, go to the sewing machine, switch to your invisible zipper foot and just baste as close as you can without sewing on your zipper teeth. You're only sewing on the seam allowance. You are not sewing on the top. So just make sure that you have everything out of the way and switch to your invisible zipper foot and base this section on. Once you do that, you're gonna flip it over and base the other section, the other side, just on the seam allowance as well. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that I went ahead and basted the zipper on, I'm going to turn my top right sides out so I could go ahead and remove that basting stitch to finish off my zipper. So just go ahead and turn your top. If you did your invisible zipper the same way that I done, just go ahead and turn it um, right sides out. And you're going to go ahead and um, open out your zipper area. So just go ahead and be very careful. You want to open, you want to remove those, the basting stitch that you did from the dot all the way up to the top. So go ahead and remove that basting stitch, being careful not to rip into your top. All right, so now what you want to do is go back to your sewing machine and you're going to sew close to the zipper teeth. So switch your, um, switch your, switch to a normal length stitch, 2.5, and then open out the coals and make sure that you are stitching close to the coals to finish off your invisible zipper. Go ahead and do that. All right, so now that our invisible zipper is installed into our top, go ahead and put your top aside and go ahead and grab your facing piece. So go ahead and grab pattern piece number 11, which is your back facing, and pattern piece number 17, which is your front facing. And with right sides together, you're going to go ahead and pin at your shoulders. You should have both of your um, pieces interfaced. So I'm gonna go ahead and put interfacing on this piece, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you exactly what you need to do. So with right sides together, go ahead and pin matching up your notches and then using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance you're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end and press your seams open so go ahead to your sewing machine and do that okay so now that i went ahead and stitched my um, facing pieces together my front to the back at shoulder seams right and then i pressed them open and then finished off the um, outer edge of my facing and I went ahead and add a my um, label if you have a label go ahead and add it as well now go ahead and grab your top so just put that out the way for a quick second grab your top and open your zipper 
Now I'm going to have my top facing me. And what I'm going to do is with right sides together, I'm going to pin my top at the neck edge. Now make sure you open out your zipper when you do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pin at my shoulder seams. And your um, back will extend past your zipper. So be, it's okay if it extends past your zipper, it will. If it doesn't, it's perfectly fine. Just make sure you are pinning. All right, so now that you have your facing pinned all the way around, so what you're going to do is using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way around your neck edge. But you're going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, sew across your neck edge. When you get to this dot, you want to back stitch. Once you back stitch, you're going to come across to this dot right here. Once you get to that dot, you're going to come across again to this top dot at the top right hand side, pivoting again, and then sew across your neck edge all the way to the end and then back stitch at the end. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that I went ahead and stitched all the way across, stitched my facing to my neck edge all the way across, I went ahead and finished off the zipper area, clipped into my curves as well. I'm gonna turn this out. Now before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and slash into my middle section right here, the front. Now you want to clip to the dot, but do not clip through it. So I'm just going to cut right in the center and stop very short of that dot. So you have that opening right here. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn it right side out. And if you have a point turner, go ahead and poke out that edge and turn it all to the inside, that facing. So like I said, if you have a point turner, you could go ahead and use your point turner and poke out all your corners and then go ahead and give it a good press and top stitch all the way around. Once you do that, the only thing that's left to do is go ahead and um, turn up your hem. So you're gonna turn up 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, open it out, press, a, press to that line and then press it up one more time to encase that, that edge, make it a narrow hem. Once you do that, you are all done. You just finished sewing your third top as part of the top series part two spring tops. So like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So until next time, keep sewing.